this is Joel Castellanos with the University of New Mexico. This CS for All video is on the random walk. We'll be implementing it in NetLogo and then using our implementation to run some quantitative experiments. Here we go. One way to visualize the random walk in two dimensions is to imagine a drunkard walking randomly in an idealized city. I say idealized because all of the roads run perfectly north, south, or east, west. All of the blocks are exactly equal size. Imagine the drunkard that at every intersection, he randomly chooses whether to walk north, south, east, or west. This that we're watching is a NetLogo implementation of the random walk just described. NetLogo's 2D worldview plane is a grid of patches, like a graph paper. Each patch is exactly the same size and perfectly square. The turtle, we start at the center of the grid, and it moves in a random direction, north, south, east, or west, or up on the screen, down on the screen, left or right on the screen. Once the turtle has chosen its direction, it moves forward exactly one patch, then stops, chooses again a random direction, up, down, left, or right, and again moves forward exactly one patch. Obviously, this is not an efficient way to cross a city. What's not so obvious is that the turtle does not stay within a small radius of where it started. Eventually, the turtle will reach a point that's 30 blocks from where it started. That's 100 blocks from where it started, 1,000 blocks from where it started. It might be thought that walking up, down, left, and right, each with equal probability, would, after millions or billions or trillions of steps, result in the walker spending more and more of its time nearer and nearer the starting location. But this does not happen. This is actually a very important result. For example, a sound wave is an alternation between compressed air and rarefied air. If the compressed part of one sound wave hits my eardrum, at the same time that the rarefied part of another sound wave hits my eardrum, then the two waves, either partly or fully, cancel each other out. So I hear either less sound or no sound at all. This is how noise-canceling headphones work. But noise-canceling headphones are not at all random. They're very carefully made. At lunchtime in the cafeteria, all the different rarefications and compressions of the air, made by different people talking and sliding plates around and banging into things, do not cancel each other out. The sum of all those compressions and rarefications is not silence. Just as the sum of all these up, down, left, and right, all these random events, is not staying in a tight, small area. In one run of this program, it might take the turtle 200 steps to travel 20 patches from the starting point. In the very next run, the turtle might run for 150 steps and end up 30 patches from its starting point. On average, over many runs, it will take the turtle longer to travel 30 steps than to travel 20 steps. No surprise there. But in the laboratory this week, we're going to be asking the question, how much longer will it take? Trying to put a number on that. Will it take on average 50% more steps to travel twice the distance? Or twice the number of steps to travel twice the distance? Or three times more? Or five times more? Or what? So why then do we care about modeling some drunkard wandering around a city? Well, it turns out that the random walk is used in many computer models. One example is the search path of bees and ants. Another real-world example of the use of the random walk is in models predicting stock prices in financial markets. Very high-dimensional random walks are used to predict genetic drift in models of infectious diseases. Researchers use these models to help them advise policymakers on issues such as where should limited vaccination resources be applied, when and where should travel restrictions be imposed, and other policy decisions that strongly affect the public. Random walks are also used to sample massive graphs of social networks. In this graph of the Facebook network, each user is represented by a dot. And if two users have friended each other, then there's a line or an edge connecting them. Users that have more friends are represented by larger dots. When applying a random walk to a graph, instead of picking a random direction up, down, left, or right, a random edge is picked from one user connecting it to a friend. This is the NetLogo program of the random walk that I've been demonstrating. The setup button clears everything out, creates, sometimes I've used it to create one turtle and sometimes multiple turtles, and then resets the tick counter. As the model runs, the tick count is displayed up here in the title bar of the world view. The random walk button has the forever option selected. Each time the random walk procedure is called, the tick counter advances by one. We will use the tick counter to keep track of how many steps it takes for a turtle to reach a certain distance from its starting patch. Now we'll take a look at the code called by the random walk button. I go to the code tab. And here's our two random walk. There is this block for ask turtles. That's going to iterate through each of the turtles that's been created and choose a random direction, move forward one patch. After it is finished with working with all the turtles, it advances the tick counter by one. Trickiest part of this code is picking the random direction. So this inner section of the statement here, random for. Random is a reporter, and we're passing it the argument for. That tells random to choose a number one number randomly, either 0, 1, 2, or 3. 
0 through 1 less than the argument that we pass it. It chooses one of those numbers to report with equal probability of choosing any one of those. So that each time we call random walk, it's going to, again, pick one of those random numbers. So this section gives us a random number between 0 and 3. We want to convert that to a direction. So we take the number and multiply it by 90. 0 times 90 is 0, which is the up direction in NetLogo. 1 times 90 is 90, which is the left direction in NetLogo, etc. So this reports a random number. We take that random number and multiply it by 90. And then that all gets passed to set the heading. So it sets the heading in one of four directions with equal probability of each of those four directions. Then moves forward one patch. Now we're going to make a modification to this random walk. Instead of modeling a drunkard walking around on an idealized city where every square is perfectly equal size and all the roads go north, south, or east, west, let's say we're going to model a bumblebee in a field trying to find flowers. In that case, the, there's no reason for the heading to only pick one of four directions. The bee could turn any direction. So where I'm setting the heading, instead of picking a random number between 0 and 3, just four random numbers, I can pick one of 360 random numbers, each with equal probability, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way through 259. Each time, it'll choose a random number in that range with equal probability of choosing each one of those numbers. Now there's no reason to multiply it by 90, and I don't need the outer set of parentheses. So I choose a random number between 0 and 259, and use that to set the heading, then move forward one. These comments are no longer relevant, so I will just remove them. And there's our complete random walk. Here on the interface tab, when the random walk button is pressed, the procedure we were just working on, random walk, will be called repeatedly, each time choosing a random direction for the turtle and the turtle moving forward one patch. To be able to see large scale patterns, I've set this 2D world view to have many very small patches. So you go up to settings, in the 2D world view, I have the origin at the center and the maximum PX coordinate, P for patch, to be 200, the maximum PY coordinate to be 200. Since the origin is, is at the center, the minimum PX and minimum PY are minus 200. And I have the patch size set to be just one pixel. So I'll click OK and then click Setup. In addition to clearing the screen and creating a turtle, I have set up Draw a Circle. In a repeat loop, it moves the turtle forward 200 patches, puts the pen down, draws a line forward 10 patches, then lifts up the pen, moves it back to the center, changes the angle by one degree, moves forward another 200 patches, puts the pen down, etc. So if I speed this up. Since we've changed our random walk procedure so that the turtle can not just face up, down, left, or right, but any of 360 different degrees, the entire inside edge of this circle are all represent points that are a distance of 200 patches from the starting point. Now when I click the random walk button, the turtle zooms around. And I'm going to slow, pause it for a minute. What I want to do is stop this model when the turtle just exactly reaches some place along the edge because I want to see how many ticks it takes to go from its starting point to a distance of 200 patches. So far, it's already done 12,788 ticks, which means random walk has been called 12,788 times in that little bit of time. If it had been going in a straight line, after just 200 ticks, it would have reached the edge. I can see a zoom in and some more details about this turtle. If I right click on it and select inspect, this brings up a window with a zoom in. I can go out just a little bit. And I can see a little bit better when it's going to be reaching the edge. And now for the I'm purpose of the, the video, I'm running this model faster than I should if I was looking for good running it accurate ahead. results. Even if I were running more slowly, this method is still going to have some inaccuracy of when I judge the turtle has just reached that boundary circle and in my reaction time of clicking the button. Some of you might be thinking, isn't there some way to make this stop automatically when it reaches a distance of 200 from the center? And yes, there is although it requires conditionals, which isn't a topic we've covered yet. So for now, it's a keen eye and quick finger clicking.